Hey guys, uh, once again, very honored here. Uh, we have an engineer here from Harley Davidson. His name is Tim Spath. He has amazing, amazing credentials. Uh, what's your title? I, uh, yeah. uh, so I'm a senior engineer working on chassis control performance. Chassis control performance. That sounds like a pretty big blanket you got to deal with, right? And uh, well, one of the reasons that I've tracked him down uh, is Harley has this new thing going on. It's called the Reflex Defensive Rider System. Uh, this is an umbrella of traction control and how linked ABS is going to help keep us safe, handling better. And I would try to learn about it and share, or we can talk to somebody who's been doing this day in, day out for years, right? Yeah. So, so Tim, um, first off, uh, vehicles that it's going to be available on, I like to discuss. Um, Livewire has most of the features that we're going to discuss. He'll, he'll be able to identify yeah. which. And, and the trike has kind of a simplified version, I think because it has such an advanced traction control system already in place. But all touring models, right, will have this available as an upgrade. Except correct? for FLHT, the electric light standard. Except for the standard, good answer. And now the uh, two wheel CVOs, it's gonna be a standard item. Yes. And on all the other touring models, we're gonna see this 995. Yep. So thousand bucks gets you this. Whenever you hear what it is, I think this is going to be a really popular item for us. So, backing up, from now on we're going to call it RDRS. I think that's what they call it. Reflex Defensive Rider Systems. Um, I'm going to go line by line by what I see. And let's let Tim fill in the blanks. So, first thing that we'll discuss is cornering enhanced electronic link braking. So, we've experienced link braking for some time, but maybe there's some limitations you guys found. In, yeah, in so, cornering because it stands the bike up, right? Yep, so basically uh, what the system does is it builds on the existing front to rear and rear to front linking and then in a situation where you're cornering and we're uh, predicting that you're at a good amount of lean angle using the sensors on the bike, we'll adjust the brake bias in the link braking system to try and minimize the steering input when you get on the brakes in a corner. That's, that's kind of a big deal. If anybody's ever, you know, and you don't go in, us as good riders, we don't do that intentionally. But all of a sudden you're halfway through, right? And that gravel's in the corner and you smash them brakes and the thing wants to stand up on you. Well, Tim and crew have been thinking of, maybe there's a better way, right? Yeah. To put it in layman terms. So now this thing isn't gonna stand you up. It's gonna help you track better into that corner under heavy braking so you can get back to accelerating on path of where you wanna be. Simple terms, there we go. I think, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, next, cornering enhanced traction control system. Um, you know, I'm going to read what the book says because I like how it mentioned okay. it. Uh, you know, keep your rear wheel from spinning out with confident traction control designed for acceleration while leaning, even in wet weather. Yeah, so basically we're using the wheel speed sensors that already existed as part of the ABS system and looking for the rear wheel to spin up. And as it spins up, the ABS module will send a torque request to the ECM, basically putting a ceiling on how much torque the engine's going to deliver and limiting that amount of wheel spin. And then for touring this year, we have two different traction control modes. We have a rain mode and a road mode. And the rain mode basically will intervene on lower levels of slip, uh, giving you a more confident experience if you're in compromised conditions. Um, and that's not just if it's wet, it's phenomenal if you find yourself uh, turning down a gravel road or gravel. in a rutted up parking lot, stuff like that. I, I've even just seen you know, paint on the road, things of that nature. Oh, yeah. I mean, just a little too aggressive on that downshift, you know? So yeah, once again, keeping us safe. Now, in most scenarios, I assume, that's gonna wanna keep the wheel speed essentially the same, right? Is that what it's essentially, essentially trying to do yeah. most of the time? So basically, we're looking at front wheel speed and uh, when you're driving uh, and accelerating, the rear wheel speed will be a little bit higher. Okay. Uh, but that's it won't where let you get power out. But it's it's yeah, it's trying to maintain a threshold. Got it. Got it. I, I see exactly how that would work. And then that's going to utilize basically like a little bit of brake pulse at it, but just probably very uh, there's, minimal. There's no brake build. It's it's all through the engine. It's all through motor. Yeah, it's all through. Really? Motor. Okay. Yep. Now now I'm learning a lot here. So that's really cool. How's that working? In a it's, way that we all understand. Yeah. It, it, it works well. Uh, I mean, I spent a lot of time riding the bike on a lot of different surfaces from 
dry asphalt to wet sealed asphalt like you'd find in a parking lot, um, but pushing forget, the bike pretty hard. I didn't ask the question the right way. I mean, um, so if it's occurring in the motor, is it um, is it going to delay a spark or is it, how is it? it? It depends on how much of a torque reduction we need and how fast we need it. So okay. uh, spark will come in for fast response and then throttle plate will be uh, sort of your main response. Got it, got it. So it'll essentially just regress that. Yeah. So you might be at 80% throttle, but it's gonna respond in 75% throttle yeah. as it compensates. Yeah, it's gonna move okay. the butterfly in the throttle body. I, I get that, I, I hope everyone understands. You know, you guys, by the way, if you have any intuitive questions, throw them in here, because I'm trying to understand this and uh, it's new to us. Once again, we have a man been doing it for years, so this really helps. Um, Next uh, topic would be cornering enhanced, that's what we just did, cornering enhanced anti-lock braking system. So versus the linked, now we're just talking about, you, you know, the ABS portion yeah. itself. So. Yeah, so uh, just like link braking, the basis of this is the existing system that we've had in place. And then the cornering enhancement is when you're at lean, uh, basically the amount of allowed wheel slip for the ABS system is less and also uh, we do some amount of control on the front to basically limit how quickly you can get that front pressure build and that's uh, just like the cornering ELB there to minimize the steering input to the bars when you get on the brakes in a corner and Got help it. you maintain your path. Nice, I, and um, you, you know, I, I know a lot of this is over my head, over many of our heads. The thing of it is, guys like Tim are in there just putting in the work, all the scenarios, making sure. So whatever all we got to do is go out there and ride, if you want to ride aggressive, or you just want to go for a daily cruise, my man's trying to keep you safe. It's pretty much that, right? Yeah, it's so the safest way to get around these bends. You know? We try not to promise safety in <laughs> right, yeah, No, the, no uh, promise, but it, doing yeah. it to the best of ability. Yeah, he's like, yeah, yeah don't. Yeah. <laughs> But, but yeah, I, so the, I understand. they're doing their best to, to let us do this as safely as possible. Yeah, the, the key is to, to ride the way you would normally ride, and then the system is always there and will intervene without you needing to take any other action other than doing your thing. Right. Now, I think, are we going to slip over the drag torque, or would um, you like to discuss that? We can talk about it if you'd like. Yeah. Um, next, next portion is uh, enhanced drag torque slip control system. Uh, stays centered on the slickest of roads with tech that keeps the rear wheel from slipping and losing grip during deceleration. Tim. Yeah, so the easiest way to think of drag torque slip control is basically traction control, but for engine brake. Um, so it's working through throttle as uh, that's how we impact the bike. So like the classic scenario to get into a drag torque slip control event would be to do a clumsy downshift, you don't quite get your rev match right, you get a bunch of slip out of the rear tire, you hear a chirp, you feel it start to come around, and then basically we will bump the throttle a little bit to catch the, the tire. Right, and, and I know I have definitely experienced that. I have to assume that comes in very handy with the uh, wet conditions yep. portion because you don't want to have that hook up. Um, one thing, and this is going to tie into a video we did earlier with Ken Osterman okay. uh, with the app. So the only way you're going to get your tire pressure monitoring system is through this umbrella on the RDRS. Um, so that now, not only do you get your tire pressure monitor, this is going to have an app that's going to show us what that is, send you a push notification if you're low on tire pressure, and also whenever you actually want to air it up, it's a 90 degree angle. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's very helpful. I love that. Um, but the most interesting piece of all of this, to many, I think, is going to be vehicle hold control. Yeah. I'm not going to steal any thunder on this. I know a little about it. I'm going to let Tim share. Okay, yeah. so vehicle hold control is available on two-wheel touring starting this year. And uh, basically how it works is you come to a stop, you give an extra squeeze with the front or rear brake, and the ABS module will build pressure to the rear brake and it'll hold you there for up to five minutes. When the system's active, you get a light that comes on on the instrument to let you know that it's doing its job. And then the exit condition for it, uh, well, there are a few. 
the, the classic exit condition is you just pull away with throttle and clutch. Uh, you don't have to worry about brake blending, so it's amazing if you're two up, fully loaded on a long trip, and uh, you came to a stop on a steep hill, and you want to be flat-footed, and you don't want to be doing this dance. So you have short legs, you're on gravel, and you're uphill, and you want to go pull out. It's going to help. <laughs> it's going to help hold that position. It's all you have to focus on is your pull out, yep. right? It's, I, I think that's brilliant. How many people get intimidated on the hillsides, the steep inclines? And I think this is just something uh, very brilliant. Uh, were you in on that thought process? Or? I was, and with yeah. the long hold, nice. it's, it's great for things other than just that. So uh, doing like some public road stuff, phenomenal if you get to a toll booth and you need to fumble around in your wallet. And yeah. you're kind of leaning a bit on the bike, so you want both feet down. And there's down. grease there in the middle, yeah. right, guys? Yeah. You know? So. Yeah. No, I, I think that was brilliant. Um, hopefully we'll see something with that in the trike in the future, too, not to say there's any disappointment. I, once again, there's so much going on with traction control in the trike. I think it's a different animal. Um, but that being on two-wheel is still incredible because you don't have to focus as much on the braking. I love it. Um, now that I mentioned that on the trike, maybe we should discuss. So of all the topics uh, here, what what can we expect difference? Everything we've discussed here is two wheel. The trike does have some variables. Can you yeah, share that? Yeah, so uh, trike only has one mode of traction control, which is carryover from 19. So it's road is, I guess, what you'd call it. Cause right. It's the default every day. So we have road, we have weather, you know, rain condition, and we have off, you know, you can. And, and one thing about Harley, they've made it where I don't see any reason to. I've experienced traction control and it's always made my life better, but you can turn it completely off. So unlike auto where they have an off traction control and it is still taking yeah. control if you weren't aware, yours actually turns off, right? Yeah, it's it's all so. the way off when it's off. Now on the trike though, we have road and we have off. Right. Right, okay. And any other differences there? Uh, so trike obviously isn't looking at lean angle since it's a flat vehicle, uh, but it does still adjust the traction control and ABS and link braking for if you're in a corner uh, for, you know, it's the adjustments that it needs for its special case as a three-wheeled vehicle. Right, right. Now, um, is that is that a standard item on the trike, or it is, is that an upgrade? On it, so it's standard. You don't pay extra. It's yep, in there it's on the three wheeler and the uh, three wheeler and tri glide. Yep, and right? CVO nice. tri glide. And CVO, here, so. CVO tri glide. Wait till you guys see them. Um, and then uh, lastly, the EV has its own blend of traction control, which is going to be a little different than our touring two wheel units. Yep. yep. So EV. Um, has still ABS, traction control, drag torque slip control, and cornering adjustments to those. And then the drag torque slip control on EV, while you don't have the ability to do a clumsy downshift because there's no clutch, when you're under regen braking, uh, that's how you get a lot of, of negative torque on that rear wheel. Right, and right. And if you are in heavy regen and you cross gravel, paint stripe, whatever, the system will still be there to bump uh, the throttle right. and, 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 and correct the slip. And, and with the EV, you have a lot of different drive modes. So, you know, you have your sport, you have your road, you have your wet, you have your eco. And then interestingly enough, there are three that you can do is your own setting, right? So what he's talking about with that regen, that's, that's your charging system that acts like an engine braking. And depending on where you're at and how you want to feel it, um, that's what he's saying, where that kind of torque conversion feel would take place. Yeah, if you so, have it set up to yeah. do basically what feels like heavy engine brake and is helping charge your battery when you're off throttle, that right. would be right. that would be your event. It, it is it, that is such a whole different incredible adventure. We're an EV dealer, proudly can't wait to help you guys ride them. It's going to be great. And uh, anything else you'd like to help in summary of this? Um, no, I think that we did a, a pretty exhaustive job covering it. Right. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. The system, you know, it's it's there and it's a, a nice confidence booster while you're out on the road and, you know, hit like the surprise situation where you're on a five-hour ride and four hours in it starts pouring rain or you're following the GPS and all of a sudden you're on a gravel road and uh, need to keep going. 
it, well, uh, on behalf of all the riders, for the thousands of us that are here and the millions out there, Tim, thank you for your good thank efforts. You. I think this is a great thing they've been up to, and uh, can't wait to get out on the road and feel it myself. So, right. uh, thank you. And, and by the way, you saved me from the intimidation of doing this on my own. You know, <laughs> he understands it so much better. So, hope you guys uh, can appreciate it. Thank right. you, Tim. Yep. Thank you. Yes.